Hi everyone. Happy New Year. So I'm Brandy Collinborn. I'm with Brush by Brandy. I'm a Dixie Belle paint brand ambassador, a furniture painter out of Sacramento, California. And I'm here to share your New Year's Day with you. I hope you guys had a great evening last night. Come on and tell me what you guys did last night for your New Year. Um, but I'm so proud to be here on the first to celebrate the New Year with you. Um, and tonight I'm going to be showing you, I thought what better way to bring in a new year than with some glitz and glamour and sparkle. And I'm going to show you how to um, add that to your furniture piece with silver leafing. Um, and I'm going to do a lot of talking about different products and um, different methods. There is no right or wrong way to do this. You kind of have to figure out what works for you. So I'll talk to you a little bit about what has worked for me in the past. And I'm sure other people out there have some great suggestions too. Um, you guys, I'm also going to be doing a giveaway. Um, if you come on and like this post and share it, um, like my page at Brushed by Brandy. And then at the end of this broadcast, we're going to be giving away an eight ounce of Dixie Belle paint in your choice of paint color. So these pieces I'm working on here, these are um, a custom order piece. And you guys, if you're familiar with my page, may have seen me do um, the rest of this set, which I did a, a large scale dresser. And this this is a really cool set because it's got a lot of detail on it. It's got these lion feet at the bottom, so it's very regal. Uh, it just kind of commands attention. So this is a great look for this piece. So let me tell you about my prep for this. All I did with these was clean them with white lightning. They had a light wood finish. They were in fairly good condition. I cleaned them well with uh, Dixie Belle White Lightning, which is a, a cleaner product. And then I have two coats of Dixie Belle Caviar on them. And then I have a coat of Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat over that. So two coats of caviar, satin clear coat over that. So my paint is nice and sealed. It's very smooth. Um, it's a beautiful, clean surface to start with to apply this um, silver leafing. That's going to be our detailing. So silver leafing, you can get silver leafing from a variety of places. It's a craft store product. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it online. And there's different qualities for different leafing. Um, and I've tried a whole bunch. And for silver leaf, I don't think it matters as much. For gold leaf, the cheaper stuff can start to discolor over time. It can turn green. So some of the cheaper gold leafing products might not be as well. I don't have that same uh, product uh, problem with silver leafing. I found for gold and silver, the Craftsmart brand, which is a craft store brand. So Michaels, Hobby Lobby, um, Carry Craft Smart. I've had good luck with the Craft Smart brand, um, but I also have a variety of other brands, and I'm just going to be using what I had on hand tonight, um, which is a you know, I don't even know where this came from, but this is what I'm going to be using tonight. So different quality of leafing, different experience, but the Craft Smart brand, especially if you're using gold, I've had good luck with that. Um, and then as far as adhesive, because you need an adhesive to cut. Um, to apply this to your surface, something for it to stick to. Tackiness is what you need. You want to be able to touch it and, and it sticks a little bit. So no matter what you're using, you have to leave it on and let it get tacky. Mod Podge is a product I do not care for. I've used it for leafing before. It works. Um, you have to apply it and let it get tacky before you can, you can um, use it to set leafing on. It, it takes a while for it to start that, setting up for that tackiness, so I don't care for the product for this purpose. Um, Mona Lisa Gold Sizing is another great product to apply leafing. I like this for precise applications. So where I want to apply it and I want it to go in a very small area or very detailed area, um, sizing is great. It's made for this purpose. So it sets up quickly, gets a nice tacky surface. Um, it's very easy to use. So Mona Lisa Gold Sizing is a good option for that. Sorry if I'm talking too much, you guys. Come on, let me know if you have any Just questions. Just really quick, Shannon yeah. says that's where she was going wrong, is you were talking about the Mod, mod Podge. Mod Podge, yeah, it's probably, it works, but it's probably one of the tougher products to choose to, to apply leafing with, um, just because you have to wait for it to set up. Um, tacky glue is another option because it's tacky right out of the bottle, but it's very thick um, going on. So it gets you the tackiness, whereas the Mona Lisa sizing is a little bit thinner. Um, 
And then spray adhesive is another option, but with spray adhesive, you really have no control over where it's going. You know, it's gonna spray out in a wide spray and your leafing is gonna stick wherever that adhesive is. So this is great when you don't want a very precise application, but good, good coverage and fast tackiness. So that's talking about the leafing, the adhesives. You can tell here, I have a very precise application. So I put the leafing on using a stencil and I'm gonna be showing you that tonight but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about stencils. This is my absolute favorite stencil. You can tell it's super well loved. I actually really need to clean it well. Um, this is a stencil by Redesign with Prima. This is their um, Imperial Damask stencil. And I'll put a, leaf on the, or a link on this thread after I get off here today. I use this stencil all the time. I love the pattern of it. It's a beautiful damask pattern. It's very rich and sophisticated looking. Um, so if you're starting out applying leafing with a stencil, I will say the larger your stencil pattern is, the easier it is to apply. So this has a fairly large stencil pattern. It's not super intricate. So this is going to be an easier um, stencil to leaf with than a more intricate one. Um, this is an example of a very intricate stencil. This would be difficult to leaf with because it's, it's just so, it's so much small, fine detail. Um, so it is possible, but you're not gonna get as clean of, of, of a pattern with this. And if you're a beginner doing this for the first time, this is not gonna be an easier one versus this larger pattern here. These are all redesigned with Prima stencils that I have out here. Um, so tonight, I'm actually gonna be using my Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat to apply my leafing with. And I'm gonna show you um, how to apply it with the Satin Clear Coat. I'm also gonna be using some spray adhesive. So Satin Clear Coat, um, is a great adhesive product. Um, actually, any of the Dixie Bell Clear Coats are a great adhesive product for applying leafing, for applying decoupage. It can be used as an adhesive product too. So I'm going to be using this here tonight. So um, I also have a, a variety of brushes. I've got some firmer brushes here, which this is the Dixie Bell um, Natural Bristle Brush. And then I've got out some of my softer brushes, the Dixie Bell Synthetic Bristle Brushes. This is the Mini, which is my absolute favorite brush. Um, it cleans beautifully. I think I'm going to get a lot of life out of these. These are my favorites. So um, let's start. So for my piece here, I don't want a really clean look. I want it to look like it was gilded ages ago and it's worn off. And um, So I'm going to come over here and you can see I've already applied some up in this corner and I'm kind of working it down. I want to connect it to my stencil right here so it kind of flows into this. I'm also going to stencil this door here, and then I'm going to come down and get this foot down here. So it'll kind of come across my piece um, and look very old and glamorous, I think. So I'm going to bring my Dixie Bell Clear Coat is what I'm going to start with here. If I open this, I'm just going to use the little residual that's on the lid because I don't need a whole lot of clear coat for this purpose. I'm going to put this out of the way. Um, and you'll see why in a few minutes because you're going to get a lot of flyaways, the waste from your leafing. So Karen just has a quick question. Yeah. How did you get the caviar not to have any streaking when you oh, applied it? Oh, here's the <laughs> secret, guys. Here's the secret to that. You take your, let's see. Um, let me grab a bowl. Be hang, hang on one second. Okay. So my clear coat, when I'm doing a clear coat over um, solid dark colors, like a black or even in the navy, I will take my Dixie Bell clear coat and I'll dump it into a dish, however much I need. I'm just going to show you this as an example. I'm not actually going to apply this right now, but this is what I did for this piece. I'll dump it into my dish and then I will take maybe a teaspoon of Dixie Bell paint. So, you know, I'll take a... This is, this is about half a container of clear coat here. I take about a teaspoon of my Dixie Bell paint. In this case, I'm just gonna use a drop because I'm gonna mix very little. I will tint my clear coat. Um, so I'm just gonna take, you know, a tight, because I'm only mixing this as a sample, tiny bit of my caviar paint and mix it into my clear coat. It doesn't take a whole lot, you guys. That was the tiniest bit of paint and it tints the clear coat really quickly. So I tinted my clear coat with my paint color. Um, if this was a mixed paint finish, this probably wouldn't be a good idea, but I, for solid color finishes, absolutely tint your clear coat in the color of your body, especially with the dark colors where streakiness um, can be a problem. 
The other thing you want to do is make sure you've stirred your clear coat very well. Um, especially using Dispel Gator Hide, there can be um, particles that settle at the bottom. So every time, shaking is not enough. Every time you open that container, get in there with a spoon or a stir stick and stir up the stuff that's on the bottom. Make sure it's really well mixed. If it's not well mixed, you're going to get streakiness too. So make sure it's mixed. Tint it if you can. This also works great for whites to keep your whites nice and pure. You can tint your clear coat with your white paint. So I tinted my clear coat with my Dixabelle paint. That is a great tip for really dark colors to avoid. So Deirdre paint. wants to know, can you also tint your gator hide? Absolutely, yes. It's especially gator hide. Gator hide is probably one of the more sensitive top coats. So yes, you want to make sure it's really well stirred and, and tint it if you can. Like I said, if it's a if it's a blended finish, um, stirring in your paint Mommy, colors. Yeah. Do you know what that little story? Daddy has one, and I have one. Oh, that tiny one. Yeah, mom has the tiny one. Okay. So I want one. So where's the bag? Because I'm cold. Back to my clear coat. Put the lid on here. I just want one. I don't have another one, sweetie. Okay, so I'm gonna take my clear coat that's just on my lid, and then I just have a little foam dabber here because I really don't want a whole lot of it. And I'm gonna come over here because, I, like I said, I want to connect this so it kind of runs into my stencil, and I'm just gonna dab it into my corner. This is the same clear coat I have on my piece. So, so for example, if you use gator head, I would use gator head for this. If you use a flat top coat, I would use flat for this. And that way, um, where there's holes in your leafing, your clear coat will match the same sheen of what's underneath it. So I use satin on this, so I'm using satin clear coat. You could use- it next to the heater? Yeah, go for it. You could use flat clear coat or you could use gator head for this as well. Okay, so I've applied some of my clear coat. I'm gonna let this actually set up for just a minute. I want it to get a little bit tacky, so I'm gonna let it dry for just a minute. And while I do that, I'm gonna come over here and talk to you about um, putting the stencil on, and then we'll come back to that corner in just a second. So when I'm stenciling, like I said, this is a very, it doesn't have to be precise, but I like to spray the backside of my stencil with spray adhesive. Um, this kind of stinks because it means you have to clean your stencils well, um, goof off works well for cleaning off spray adhesive from your stencils, but you do have to maintain them from doing this. Um, so I will spray the back side of my stencil just with a misting of, oh, I got some leafing stuck on there. Okay, so I'm going to spray the back side of my stencil with my spray adhesive. And then I just have a little bit of painter's tape up here because that's going to hold my stencil in place when I place it onto my piece. And I'm going to line up my pattern kind of in the center of my door here where I want it. And it's got some spray adhesive on it. So when I press on it, it's going to lightly adhere to the front of my piece. That spray adhesive does not transfer to the piece. It's going to stay on my stencil. I don't have enough on there. Let me miss it again. So now when I press it on here, you see how it sticks in place onto my piece? Oh. Well, except for the tape. Yeah, except for my tape. <laughs> so that, I just want the tape to hold this top up because I'm not going to be stenciling this top portion. I'm just doing this door front here. And I'm going to lightly press it onto my surface. I'm keeping an eye on my clear coat over here. Dixie Bell clear coat will start to turn clear as it's drying. It's still pretty white, so I know I've got a little bit of time to wait for that to set up a little bit, so I've got that tackiness. Okay, so I've got this applied here. It's loosely applied. It's not perfect because I've got some um, ridges around the edge of my doors. So it's loosely applied and I'm going to take my spray adhesive again. Um, like I said, if you wanted a really precise clean application, you'd probably want to use either your clear coat or gold or leaf sizing on here. But I don't want a precise application. I want it a little bit random and sporadic. So I'm going to take my um, spray adhesive I'm going to hold down some portions that are next to the ridges. This is just what works for me. There are other ways to do this too. And I'm going to spray over my stencil. Oh, I can see off. My boys are out here, guys. This is my four-year-old Logan. He came out to join us. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have three boys and I work home with my kids. Yeah. So they're very much a part of what we do here. Okay, so I've got my 
sprayed. He said sprayed over my stencil. And I got my heater. Yeah, he's sitting next to the heater. It's cold. If I take this off, tell me if you guys can see this on camera. Can you see that? Kind of a shadowy effect, but yeah. Can you see yeah. the shadow of the spray adhesive around the stencil? So now that's where the tackiness is. Now when I stick my leafing onto here, it's going to stick where the stencil was applied and that um, adhesive went. So you kind of want to avoid getting your fingers into your leafing because it's very, very sensitive and it will stick to whatever you touch. I have spray adhesive on my hands right now. It's going to want to stick to me. So what kind of adhesive is that? That was um, 3M Super 77 multi-purpose spray adhesive. I like this one because I like the um, nozzle on it. It gives a nice broad spray on it. But, you know, like I said, there's a million products that you can use that give you that adhesiveness. So now I'm going to take my pieces of leafing. I'm breaking my rule and I'm using my fingers here. And I'm sticky, so, and then I'm gonna use a soft brush and just press it into place. This is where you want a soft brush. So I'm gonna get it all pressed into place and then I'll come back and I'm gonna remove the parts that I wanna take off. I'm using a soft brush, pressing it in. That was my stencil that just fell. You're gonna have a lot of waste from your leafing. It's not a very expensive product. The nicer leafings are, um, a little more expensive and they can be worth it if you want a really clean look. Inexpensive leafing would work good for this for this look here. Oh, I dropped that one. Oh, it landed perfectly. Oh, that's where we're going. Um, happy accidents. That's the Mama, can you go pick that thing up? This okay. makes me nervous because I don't always know how it's going to turn out, but that's kind of the beauty of it is some of the randomness. That one. So now can you address once again when you get the adhesive on a side something on the painted surface? No, I'm gonna turn my heater off because it's wanting to blow. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Blow okay. Up. Here, let me. Sorry guys. You guys, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions you have. So what do you do if uh, you end up spraying your spray adhesive on the painted surface? You can remove it with goof off. Go back and um, let it dry first. Let everything dry and then um, go back and clean your surface with goof off. Mom, look. I, I put Thanks. it on again. Thank you. Is this where it's supposed to be? But as far as the piece is concerned. Can I come over here and take one over? Yes. Yes. Clean. Because I've sealed my paint here. So if I need, if I got some, you know, on a little part that I don't want adhesive on, I will apply my leafing and then I'll come back and you know, clean whatever spot has tackiness on it that I didn't intend. So you can, I can clean it. My paint is nice and protected with a clear coat. I'm just pressing this all over the front of my piece. I'm still watching my clear coat over there. It's still a little bit white. It's cold here. I'm in California. It's fairly cold right now. So it's going to take a little bit longer to start setting up. See, I want to keep touching it and my fingers are sticky and then the leafing wants to stick to my fingers. So I was just trying to keep my mind from wanting to touch the leafing all the time. Which is a challenge. Okay. One more piece down here. Um, when I'm doing this, I don't always like to have a clean edge. You don't want it to look like you just put squares on. So you can tear your leafing if you want a... I mean, you can see how fine and flimsy it is. It's very thin oil. I mean, this is this is not actually gold leaf. It's a very thin, or silver leafing. It's a thin foil. It's not real silver by any means. Paul Ann says it's cold in California. She's in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We, um, Basically, we don't know cold. Yeah, we don't know cold. We don't. We really don't. But I'm a California native. I'm born and raised here, so it's all I know. You know, you get used to wherever you are, and this is just what I know. Now I'm coming back. This is still my soft brush, and I'm brushing away the stuff that will easily fall away. You can see I've got a lot of waste here, and it just falls away to the floor. Now, if there's a spot like right here where I didn't get a piece, I can take these little pieces that have fallen away, and I can, you know, fill in anywhere I want. So I will use these little scraps that have torn off on a look like this and stick them in, you know, any bare spots that I want. 
So now I'm going to brush away the stuff that easily comes away and it doesn't look like much right now. Um, I have a big firm brush out here and I'm just going to, I'm just using this to keep my area clean because I don't want these little flyaways to get stuck. And now I'm going to come back and start brushing away the stuff that's not stuck in. And you're going to see, I'll use my, my Dixie Belle natural bristle brush. You're going to see my stencil pattern starts to appear. And this is where I can kind of use a firm hand to really brush this away and get it out of this, you know, the blank areas of my stencil or what I'm trying to get it out of. So there's one up here and I can see, I can see where there's adhesive underneath my leafing, if that makes sense. I can see it through the top. And so those are areas I can come back and scrub a little bit more. See how I just did this little area down here and this part of where my pad stencil pattern is, it starts to reveal itself. Um, I can do this right after applying this with the um, spray adhesive. It sets up really quickly, but if you're using a product that doesn't set up as fast, you need to let it dry a little bit. Because, for example, if I did, if I scrub like this on top of the clear coat, it takes longer to set up. I'm going to be taking off the leafing even on the parts where I want it to stay. So just be aware of what type of adhesive you're using. Another thing I can do, because I can tell the areas that have... Um, no adhesive under them. This is a, um, it's like a finishing pad. It's a, it's lightly abrasive and I can scrub it back from the spots I don't want it to stay on. And there you see my stencil pattern is revealing itself even more. Here, I'm going to try to zoom in a little better because it's kind of cool to see that start to come. I'm just trying to get my leafing off of the areas that don't have adhesive underneath them. Now, the abrasive pad does also start to um, scratch the surface of your leafing. It can take away the shininess. I'm okay with that here because it's a very rustic look, but if you're doing something precise and um, delicate, you may not want to do this with the abrasive. I want it to be worn and um, here's a spot down here that's going to reveal itself. See, I have all these flyaways. There's, there's leafing flying away everywhere. Can you guys see it in the air? You know, that's really pretty. It carried up here a little bit onto this molding. Just, you know, I, I don't worry about the overspray of my spray adhesive with this, but I think this is really pretty. It's a little more worn down here. So Becky wants to know if the sanding will scratch the paint. Um, okay, so when I'm done here, I don't have a problem sanding my paint. Um, I'm gonna apply another clear coat over this to protect my leafing. Um, I'll clean all these little um, flyaways of leafing off. So I'm gonna wipe it down nice and clean and I'm gonna put another clear coat over this. So my leafing is protected, my paint is protected. So if I'm, um, this is really lightly abrasive. I'm not using like sandpaper, but um, if I, am sanding my finish essentially at this point. I'm not worried about that because I'm going to clear coat it again anyway. I want to protect this, this finish after I'm done. I don't know. I find this process has a lot of caveats and a lot of things that work and don't work. Um, so you'll just have to find out what adhesive you prefer for the look that you're going for. Um, what type of stencil works for you, but I like, I like the spray adhesive as an option for getting it on the stencil like this. And I feel like that's a nice, huh. pretty random look. Uh, Melissa said, the, she's got a point now that I look at it, the bottom of the stencil has a tiger face. <laughs> totally random, yeah. but it's oh, kind of like, cool. Oh, like over here, yeah. I see it, like the this nose. the nose right here, yeah. and eye and eye. Oops, it's kind of and now that you see it. Now it's looking at you. That's all I'm going to see now. <laughs> This is so the tiger got, piece. I got a little bit down here, but it's, this is such a random pattern. I don't even care that it's down here. I think it looks pretty. 
I could take that off with the abrasive if I wanted to, but I don't want to in this case. I think it looks really pretty. So I like this. And then I try to keep my workspace clean because as you move, I mean, this stuff is flying in the air. So I'm going to brush it over this way because I don't want it getting stuck in places that I don't want it. So I just want to keep all these little the scraps clean and out of the way, out of the air. Like I said, I'm going to clean this piece back off and put another clear coat on it. Now I'm going to come over here where we use the clear coat as our adhesive. And I'm going to take and put my leafing on there. And I'll show you how that works just a little bit differently than the spray adhesive. I wanted it very precisely in just this corner. And if I sprayed this, I wouldn't be able to control. It could be over here. It could be getting up here. I can control where that clear coat went. So I'm going to do the same thing and apply the leafing over the Dixie Belle clear coat. This is Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat, which is the same sheen I used to coat my piece. Um, I put it into this corner. So up here, I didn't have any. It's going to brush away really easily. You know, I'm going to use some of these scraps I have because they're kind of torn edges, and I want torn edges. I don't want to, you know, I don't want a square right here. That would look silly. I'm pressing them in with this really soft brush. If I use my fingers, it's going to want to stick to my fingers. If you have oils in your fingers, that can also discolor some leafing, um, more with gold than silver. I'm going to fill in some spots over here where it broke away. I'll fill them in with these little scraps that are falling away. And then fill this spot in right here. You know, for example, if I if I didn't come far enough out, I've got this little piece here. I'm going to let it let it stay, but it's, I don't have any clear coat there, so I can come back and apply some, and now it's going to stick, whereas it was going to fall away before. So, I mean, however you want it. So then I will take my dabber, and I'm going to put more clear coat on it, and now I'm going to come over the top, and this is kind of sealing the deal. This is going over the top of my leafing. It's pressing it into places that it is, once you get the, you know, the placement that you like. And it, I'm putting clear coat over the top of it, and it's also pressing it down and sealing it down. And then the clear coat dries clear, of course. So once it dries, it's kind of white now, but once it dries, it's going to hold my um, leafing in place, and it's going to dry clear, and it's going to protect over the top of it. So it's serving students double duty right now if that makes sense. So, you know, now I put clear coat over the top. I could come back with, I'm gonna grab a little scrap over here. Say I wanna fill this, I don't know, where do I wanna fill in? Down here, maybe. And I can keep adding pieces until I get, you know, all the coverage that I want. I want this to be, you know, kind of broken up and, um, random so I can fill it in as much as I like or take off as much as I like um, and I'll press these in and then I'm going to come back and kind of seal the deal with my clear coat over the top of it I don't like how it's got see it's got that square edge like the square edge so if you kind of mess it up there it just took off that perfectly straight little edge I had going on now, just to recap, the color that you're using um, of the piece? My piece is two coats of Dixie Belle paint and caviar, which is a nice, rich, pure black. Um, two coats of Dixie Belle caviar, and then one coat of satin clear coat is what's underneath my leafing. So, two coats of caviar, one coat of satin clear coat, and then I'm putting my leafing on top. And then I'm going to come back after this is dry, and I'm going to re-clear coat the entire thing. All of it the whole body and that's going to protect my leafing it's going to seal it in place and it's going to protect my paint so here's kind of where i am i'm going to let that dry i'll come down here and do some on this foot too so it carries across and um, this is going to be a three-piece set so each piece is going to be a little bit different a little bit more random and that's okay i am covered in silver leafing right now it's on my fingers it's on my clothes um I'll have to sweep this all up. 
make sure you close your paint lids because all the flyaways are going to want to land in it. You don't want to leave anything open during this process. So that is that is kind of it, you guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll come on this thread and answer them after the fact. There's a lot of just, um, that was the wrong lid, a lot of figuring out what works, what's the proper adhesive, and you can try different things, but I like I like using the um, Gypsy Bell Clear Coats. I like spray adhesive, and I like gold leaf sizing, depending on you know, whether it's a really broad or specific application of gold leaf. All right, so um, you guys wanna give away some paint? If you liked my page at Brush by Brandy um, and shared this post, you're eligible to win an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint. And I'm gonna come on and choose a winner right now, you guys. Let me step behind the scenes where the magic happens. Where is the silver leafing from? I see as a question. Um, you can order the silver leafing off of Amazon. It's available in craft stores. I like the craft store brand, which is called Craft Smart. It's a little more expensive. All right, you guys, I'm looking for a winner. All right, you guys are ready. A winner tonight of an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint and your choice of paint color is Lisa Wolf Koi. So Lisa, congratulations. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with us on your New Year's Day. Not that there's anywhere open and you guys were up way too late last night. So what else to do but watch me paint? I know I'm exhausted. I was up till 4 a.m. this morning hanging out with high school friends around a fire pit. We had a blast last night. We had a really good time. Kids all played together. Um, I don't drink, but we just sat around talking. So it was a fun night. I didn't go to bed till 4 a.m., which is why I look like this today. But congratulations to Lisa Wolf Coy. Thank you guys for hanging out with us on New Year's Day. Lisa, if you message me on my page at Brush by Brandy, I will get your information and we'll get an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint um, sent out to you. You guys, I'm going to be live every Thursday in January. Um, I'm going to be live on the Dixie Bell page, the same page at 9 p.m. Eastern every Thursday in January. We're going to take a piece and we're going to start it from start to finish. Um, every Thursday we'll work on the same piece. So at the end of the month, you essentially have a full tutorial um, on a piece. So come follow me this month every Thursday. And then you guys on the 6th, um, I get to paint with Kristana. So Kristana is another Dixie Bell brand ambassador. And on the 6th, we're going to get together and we're just going to have some fun. Her and I have a blast together. It should be fun to watch, um, but we're going to come on and paint together. So that's on the 6th. And then every Thursday in January, you get just me and um, working a piece from start to finish. Happy New Year, you guys. I'll come on and answer any questions you have. Um, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.